guys found me, and um, I, I just thank you for them. So I, I would say, you know, my teammates, again, cliche answer, my teammates put me in that, in that position. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, AG, I like to call you Mr. Stay Ready. Uh, for a guy like you, every time your numbers come, you always pro seem to produce. Um, just what goes into your mindset? Um, it may be like a little bit, I may have a, some sort of problem. Um, I just can't <laughs> allow someone to work harder than me. Um, so if I see somebody on the court, you know, at practice there before me or even after me, um, I have some kind of problem with that. So I always have to come back in the gym and, and either get more shots or, or run more sprints or something like that. Uh, in preparation, knowing that whenever I do get my opportunity on the court, if I don't have the talent, if I don't have the skill, I know I'll outwork those guys. So I have the confidence in that. Um, and that's pretty much it. And coach called you night a good karma type of night. And I said, you know, you're always the first one to clap, always the first one to throw to pick someone up. You kind of set the blueprint for being the ultimate pro. Um, just, can you just talk to that of just your, your character as a player and as a person as well? Yeah, I just think it's um, sometimes in the NBA we can get a little bit, uh, I guess, sidetracked from what we are. We're called to be as people, human beings. Um, you know, we just try every day, you know, you strive to be the greatest player, I mean, greatest person you can be. Uh, it's the same for me. Uh, we just have a lot more distractions as NBA players. So every morning when I wake up in the morning, I try to refocus myself and humble myself before I walk into the uh, practice facility or the arena to, you know, I got to sacrifice for my teammates. You know, whatever they need today, I'm going to be the one that, that gives it to them. You know, if, if they need water, if they need Gatorade at, at timeout or in the locker room, I'm going to be the guy that brings it to them. I'm gonna humble myself, you know, as the last guy on the bench every single game. Um, that way they can have, you know, the ultimate experience. And then on nights like tonight, you know, it, it kind of, you know, they, it flips on its head, you know, and, and they kind of, you know, you hope that they're gonna do the same thing for you when that opportunity comes. And tonight was a great example of that. You know, I think we're trying to build something great here uh, in Washington with the organization. Uh, it starts with great character people, and we have a whole bunch of those in the locker room. Um, and I couldn't be more proud of those guys. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, on the court, you know, you really had a lot of success cutting. Um, what has made you an effective cutter, and how did you like learn that skill as you grew up as a basketball player? Uh, yeah, so we have a lot of talented guys, and a lot of guys who want to shoot the ball. Um, the other team knows that as well. Um, so my job is, you know, how can I alleviate some of that pressure off of them uh, when they have so much attention you know, on a guy like Kuz or on a guy like Monte who's going to got hot tonight. Um, how can I alleviate that pressure? Um, and, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not going to be the one who can take you off the dribble. Uh, so I had to find something else and find another way to help the team, whether it be offense or rebounding or cutting or playing defense. Uh, just finding a way to be valuable when you're on the court. You know, you, you never want to just coast out there. So just finding a way. And um, so you guys obviously don't have to be two big, biggest players. Uh, how was the task of protecting the rim and how do you guys, how do you think you did in that regard? Um, Protecting the rim, you know, I don't think <laughs> I'm out there, you know, intimidating anyone. But uh, <laughs> um, as far as doing what I could do, you know, uh, Vooch is a, a big guy, you know, and they're, you know, knowing that I'm guarding them, they're going to try to go, go to him in the post. Um, so all I could do is try to use my quickness and try to front him. Um, didn't kind of, you know, deter them from throwing the ball inside. Um, it worked a little bit, um, but, you know, I don't think I was scared anymore from coming to the play <laughs> tonight. <laughs> <laughs> question kind of unrelated to the game but as you were talking about your character I was it looks like I see a Bible verse tatted on you what mm -hmm. Bible verse is that and why that one? Oh yeah so this is first Corinthians 6 19 and 20 uh, I got this uh, my sophomore year of college um, my wife and I recommitted our life to Christ um, and kind of it reshaped our whole you know lifestyle I've been this is a little tangent but I've been with my wife since I was 15 um, and now I'm 30 so 15 years later I'm here with three kids and uh, this Bible verse is a big reason for that you know we kind of um, wanted to respect ourselves until we got to marriage um, and this was the commitment that we made thank you one more quick one um, just from your perspective what was the biggest thing that changed in that third quarter um, I think it was our intensity and our effort um, you know and that carried over to the fourth quarter um, there's been a lot of situations this year where, I mean, if you just look at our last couple games where we had a lot of, um, a lack of effort, um, and we didn't want that to be tonight. You know, we know we were short guys and, um, we didn't have, 
you know, the typical roster that we normally have. So we didn't have all the talent that we normally have. There's a lot of talented guys in there, don't get me wrong. Um, but we knew we had to make up for it with effort. Uh, that third quarter was um, really the part where, we, you know, we wanted to hunker down and, and, and do what we said to, to win that game. Uh, and if you look at the fourth quarter, that kind of paid off. I mean, there was a possession where we had at least three or four guys diving on the floor for a, a loose ball. And those are the kind of things that we needed and it started in that third quarter. Hey, G, what was just, if you could describe the halftime speech that kind of got things turned around? Um, I don't think there was anything, you know, said that, uh, you know, so profound. I think, you know, every time we come into the locker room, Coach shows some film, you know, and how we can really um, adjust to what they're doing out there and, and, you know, some of the plays that we have lack of effort in. Um, so if anything, it was, you know, show a couple plays where, you know, we could have had this loose ball or we can't give up this offensive rebound. Um, so I think, you know, us seeing ourselves at halftime, you know, really taking that, swallowing that humble pill, um, you know, allowed us to go out there in the, in the second half and play as hard as we could. I know uh, Denny got you a little bit on the court. Did they do anything for you in the locker room? No. Um, coach started talking about me, but I quickly tried to bring it in as fast as I could. Uh, I, you know, if you know anything about me, I don't like for people to talk about me, and this is my first time ever doing media, so uh, I don't like you know talking about myself again in this uh, kind of mode either. So. He tried to he tried to talk about me, but I quickly just brought it into the middle. So, <laughs> what was it like getting the belt? Uh, it was that's my second time getting it, and oh wow, the first time I got it, we played against Chicago too. Uh, yeah, that was the um, home opener. Yeah, and DeRozan hit and tried to shoot the last second shot, and I was there to play defense on him. Um, so that's funny that you know, but again, I'm just so thankful for the opportunity that I had out there and. Um, the guys put me in the very position to to be to to do that tonight and have such a successful game. Um, also, that belt is supposed to be like a defensive belt, and um, I got it because I got a career high. It's not really lining up. That's <laughs> 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 what it's supposed to be. Uh, but I appreciate Kuz for stepping outside the box for me. <laughs> Can you take us just through that um, that last play? What you were looking for? What you were thinking? And just you know the confidence of put the ball in my hands and I'll make something happen. Yeah, I was just trying to, um, you know, give myself the best chance to uh, make a play. Um, you know, I caught the ball, I looked, uh, looked left and a lot of things were forcing me left. So I just had uh, the line just kind of get flat a little bit. So I knew I had Caruso on me and he's one of the better defenders in the league. So just giving myself a chance to go uh, pick either way instead of just being directed in one. Um, Taj came up. I was trying to get downhill at first, but I noticed that uh, he was up at the level a little bit, and it probably wouldn't have been hard to get through. Probably no call again. So, um, you know, I just uh, threw the ball to an open spot on the floor and um, just just uh, rose up and shot it and um, went in. What flipped in the third quarter? Or what changed so much for you guys in the third quarter? Uh, we just got stops. I think that was the biggest thing. Uh, played within ourselves. Yeah, I think it was a couple of plays. I don't know if it was early in the fourth or in that third. We had Goody in with DeLon, and they were caught to have it, making, um, making some big-time plays. Goody came in, hit uh, two big threes for us that really gave us like a six- or seven-point lead at one point. It was huge. And um, Anthony Gill did a phenomenal job playing well. Um, you know, ultimate professional, never plays, got in, scored 18. Really showed our bigs how to, you know, front other bigs, and um, did a phenomenal job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you kind of beat me to that, but let me kind of touch back on Anthony Gill. Yeah. How how is it having a vet like that? You know, I told him he's the, he's his character, the first one to clap for you, first one to get off the ground, pick a team up. How is it having a guy like that in the locker room? Uh, I mean, he's he's probably the most wholesome person I ever met in my life. Um, barely says a cuss word. Um, comes in every 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 day that we ever practice. He's probably there at 7.30 or 8. Um, he's up more than us because he does have multiple kids. So I'm not calling him Kobe Bryant come to the gym. But um, yeah, he just, he, he, he he's a rare person. And I'm, I'm very, very happy for him. Um, phenomenal teammate. And as you know, scoring is one of the key points of basketball, but it's also the tangible. 
had a lot of hustle plays tonight. What did you see from that aspect of the team as well? Yeah, we had hustle plays down the stretch. I think um, the one play where we had multiple multiple guys diving on the loose balls with 30, 32, 33 seconds left, that was a, a huge play for us because uh, it could have been easy um, for them to get a better shot off, but you know we stuck with it, played with the 50-50 balls, really allowed um, you know one second on the shot clock. Levine hit a tough shot, but just down the stretch. Um, you know, just making key little intangible plays really, really helped us. Um, yeah, it was great. The third quarter was the highest scoring quarter of Monte's career, 15 points. Mm -hmm. um, what, what did that mean to the team, you know, especially you know, going down 13 in the halftime for him to give you guys that type of win? Oh, yeah, I forgot about Monte. Yeah, he killed too. Um, yeah, I think it was very, very big for us, you know, that third quarter. And he, he spearheaded a lot, just taking uh, – just – doing what he does he's done that his whole life just take care of the ball <clears throat> make sound floor general plays and um he really really held, held us together offensively in that quarter um you know super big time so kyle how do you mentally reset after having a game a monday where you visibly frustrated and then coming back tonight and you know having a great game hitting the game winning shot yeah, sometimes you're you're going to be frustrated. It's life. Um, it's hard to hold your composure in front of twenty thousand people when things aren't going your way all the time. <clears throat> it's tough. I'm human, so um, you know, after games, I'm never really I never really dwell on things. Um, you know, I got home, I had a beer, we just chilled out, and uh, you know, the best part about this league is you're always going to have another chance, uh, God willing, but. Play 82 games. You can't harp on, you know, a game where you're frustrated or you feel bad for yourself or you're just not playing the way you really usually ever play. And um, yeah, you know, you always gonna have another chance in life. And it's always about being ready and being in the right mind state and um, just always remaining positive. For me, I'm a very optimistic person. So. Uh, so you mentioned that teams are forcing you left more. Do you try to fight against that? Uh, to get to your right, or do you kind of just play within that to find your teammates' opportunities? I mean, I, I play within it. Obviously, I, I do like going right, you know, because um, it's my stronger hand. And a lot of times, if I'm going right, good things are happening. But, you know, shit ain't broke. And it's going to be left and my right's good. So, uh, it is what it is. You know, I just try to find play the right way at all times and um, just take what the defense has given me and then. Um, take what I want when I can, so. Uh, and you guys have gotten some of these gritty, tough wins. Uh, you know, Wayne mentioned it, but do, how is that personality of this team coming along as you get into the thick of the season? Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, we're 42, 43 games in, and um, the only thing consistent about us so far is we've been inconsistent. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, whether that's being on the court, being available, um, effort, so many different things. We've just been really, really inconsistent. And it's very tough and it's very frustrating sometimes, but you know, we just got to remain remain with it. Because um, you never know who's going to be in the lineup. Um, but the one thing you can control in this life is your attitude and your effort. And we got a lot of good high character guys in our locker room and we just got to figure it out one game at a time. Yeah. With, with all the injuries you're going through again now, is this survival mode basically until you get all these games? You have to win this way to, to win games. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say survival mode because this is just kind of, I mean, really, we've been talking some survival mode all year, pretty much, if you want to put it that way. But, um, you know, we just got to find a way. You know, nobody feels sorry for us. Uh, we don't feel sorry for us. So, you know, every single night, Everybody knows how tough it is to win ball games in this NBA. Steve Kerr just did it the other day. It's extremely hard. And, um, yeah, you just got to figure it out. You know, it's cliche to say, but, um, you know, you just kind of put together stops and possessions, and then you win a quarter, then you win the next quarter. You may lose a quarter, but then you got to finish off and win that quarter. And that's what we did tonight. And um, it wasn't pretty. I mean, we scored probably 13 points in the fourth. Um, Barely scored 100 points, but you'll take that. You'll take a win like that for sure.
Did you know the shot was going in as soon as it left your hand? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that one I did. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you guys are undersized, no KP, no gap. What does it mean that Denny goes and gets 20 boards? I mean, most of them are uncontested, but I'll still give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to him. That's a, it's, it's a hell of an accomplishment, for sure. Denny, I'm really mad at him because he only had nine points, yeah. so it doesn't even look good. <laughs> but he had 20, and it was huge. And it was big for us, and we needed it because we were downsized. Um, a lot of times we were wrestling, whether with um, Vooch down there, because us playing small, you know, he was really trying to be hungry on the boards, and uh, he cleaned it up a lot and, and really finished the possession for us, and it was huge. And uh, we needed every one of them. So.